What is going on, E Nation fans? This is the Impress 48 here. Welcome to the 10th episode of Racing Topics with Ian Perez. I've been wanting to talk about this for a a bit. Maybe probably since after Sunday's Bristol race. I want to talk about my honest, my 100% honest take about the iRacing um, events that's been happening since the pandemic started, basically. I know uh, that you guys see my reaction videos of the NASCAR I races, the IndyCar I races. I know. You can hear me having fun, joking around and all that stuff. And just watching the race and cheering for Byron. Um, not cheering about my drivers being erect and all that stuff. Aside from the reaction videos, I want to go personal on the iRacing stuff. I want to start off with IndyCar. So the iRacing IndyCar challenge is taking place for six races. It started out walking to Glen. We just had Barber. My personal honest take so far is that the drivers, they're taking it serious and they've been having fun with it. And honestly, it's been fun to watch. And I've been and I enjoy that. I don't think I've seen any problems. I heard, the only problem I heard is that Scott Dixon I, I don't know what Dixon said. It was probably about something about i racing. I don't know. I know that Dixon might be the only driver that has a problem with what's going on. Not that he hates it, but something's going on or whatever. Anyway. So we had good races so far. Uh, Watkins Glen was all right. Uh, although I don't like Barber, but that's been a bit better of a race so far. That's been the uh, best race. And I can't wait to see how Michigan goes on Friday, I think. I think the next IndyCar Challenge race is Friday. So yeah. My personal take is that uh, IndyCar has been doing good with iRacing. It's not a caution fest. It's been a rug fest at times, but not as much as NASCAR. The problems I have with iRacing with IndyCar is uh, they're caution free races. And Barber only had one competition caution. I don't understand why that they're not doing any cautions. I seriously, I really don't understand why they don't. I know it's just a simulator and we're having fun seeing those professional drivers racing in a sim on TV and on streams. However, why can't there be any cautions when like something happens? It doesn't have to be like a one car spin. If it's like a crash, a big crash, whatever it is. I know, I know you can like reset your cars for repairs easily, like that. But I think to make it a bit realistic, at least, at least have some cautions, depending on the accident. Obviously, like come on, caution for races. I don't know, they're like a bit snoozer and kind of pointless. And it's and I think that's the only problem I have about it. Um, no problem at all. So. The best for last, somewhat, NASCAR's iRacing. For my reactions, um, you guys been seeing me, like, having fun watching these races. You know that stuff, like I mentioned in the beginning of the video. However, I have a problem with iRacing NASCAR. What's the problem? The drivers are taking this way too serious. It's been nothing but a caution fest, except for Texas. I don't think that's been as much of a caution fest. That's the best, best race I've seen. <coughs> okay. So I know these drivers, these professional NASCAR drivers are supposed to have fun and take it serious at the same time during this pandemical timing 
of the coronavirus. It's only until that we get to see real racing again as soon as the pandemic is either gone or not really a big, the biggest deal like it is now. But at the same time, I feel like these drivers are taking this way too serious. What do I mean by that? <clears throat> Everybody just wrecking each other, um, paybacks and all that stuff. These caution fests, wreck fests, like what are we doing? I know it's a simulator, but these are professional NASCAR drivers racing in the sim. How in the hell can you keep um, messing up a bunch of times? I don't come. I don't get it. Homestead. Um, the only good racing we had was like last twenty some last because it was in a caution fest. Everybody kept wrecking. What the fuck? I know it's a simulator, but what are we doing? It makes Arca look talented, professional. Like, come on. Texas. It wasn't really, like, as much as a caution fest. I think the race in general was not bad. And it was, like, not as much cautions. Um... Not as much as a wreck fest as Bristol and Homestead. Daniel Suarez, uh, the Daniel Suarez thing with a dog. I don't know. I don't know what's going on, but I didn't know you can get parked in iRacing for for the provisional series. I don't play iRacing, so I'm not sure. Until that happened, like, oh, okay, so I can see why it's like it's serious at the same time. Um, and then I would say the controversial race has been Bristol. I mean, not just because it's Bristol. I mean, like, <clears throat> what's going on with the iRacing stuff? So, what did we see? Literally nothing but a caution fest and a wreck fest. Even Homestead finished off um, the last... 20 or 16 laps. Bristol was just literally a breakfast. Like, as much as as entertaining it was, that's... It's not the... I mean, all, besides the caution fest and the breakfast, that was a good race, but... Seriously, come on. You gotta be fucking kidding me. Like, don't get me wrong, I'm still having fun. But it's just that... I know that their sponsors are still paying them to do that stuff, but sorry if, I'm, if I like sound dumb. But come on, I don't know why. Why can't these drivers have fun during this bad timing? Honestly, I know that it's broadcasted on TV. I know sponsors are still paying them, and they still gotta show their best. The thing is, they're not. They're literally just wrecking each other. It's been a wreck fest. I know I've been saying that a bunch of times throughout this video, but that's how it's been. I don't know what's going to happen in the future of the provisional series until we get back to real racing. But for fuck's sake, what is it with these caution fests and wreck fests? As for the uh, Bubba Wallace situation, like literally, it's... I, the blue, I'm I'm with Bubba in this one. I'm on Bubba's side. So what if he rage quitted on a lap five? What's wrong with showing real emotions? <clears throat> That's not the point. As he quoted, this is why I can't take this shit too seriously. Because look at look look what's been happening in the past three races: caution fest, rack fest. I don't blame him for like quitting the race. As for the sponsor, Blue Emu, um, what they did on Twitter, as usual, because everybody depends on Twitter nowadays. That's why I fucking hate Twitter. Um, they just quit. They just like we don't we don't sponsor quitters. Bye, or whatever. However, it went. To be honest. Blue Emu did not treat this professionally. Like, 
are you kidding me? We have a... He's just doing, like, some sim races just for the fun of it. Of course he's not. Of course he's gonna be like that. I'm sure other drivers are being like that. Like, quitting the race. And all that stuff. But I don't blame him particularly because it's been a shit fest. As for Blue Emu, I don't know why they were just like that. I mean, yes, David Lamb made a point last night. Um... Blue Emu and Bubba could like had personal communications about what happened after Bubba's rage quit. The way Blue Emu handled it, it was just not professional at all. I know there's still money online for sponsors, but they did this unprofessionally. So I think Drivers should just have fun. Oh yeah, the Larson Suarez thing. I don't, I like Daniel Suarez. Like I respect the hell out of him, but it's just a sim race. Seriously, it's that that's common sense. It's just a simulator. If you want to take that heat of a moment, save that shit when we go back to real racing. Well, not take it on the i racing stuff. But I mean like. Like, hey, hey, mighty going, I'm going to kick your ass, me, amigo. Like, or however, however it went. And these drivers are just not handling it professionally. You can have fun and be serious at the same time. But there comes a time that you have to be professional about it. I know the Bristol race was just an angry fest. It's always had been an angry fest in real life, too. However... These drivers are just taking this way too serious and out of pr proportion because it's just a simulator race. There's no point on the line. I don't know what these drivers are worried about. Yes, the racing stuff. I get it. But, there's, but remember, there's no points on the line. I just don't understand. And... Oh yeah, one more thing about iRacing. Um, the replays suck. I love how some people put the blame on replay for Fox Sports, but they're not the one controlling the replays. I believe it's iRacing that controls the replays as well. And if that's the case, they'd be doing a terrible job. Because there could be a because whenever there's a big crash, they always show one angle, and it's not the best angle whenever it's just an onboard or a bad angle of a crash. Most of the time they would just show the replay once. That's it. I know it's not real life, but still we st we fans as a watcher viewing the race, we want to know more about what happened, who did what. One replay, whether it's good or bad, does not explain at all. Doesn't explain anything. So, although it's been fun to watch, at the same time, that's just my personal opinions about it. What do you guys think about the iRacing stuff? Like, don't get me wrong. The races have been fun to watch regardless. I'm having a good time during this uh, pandemic. Better than nothing, and I appreciate the NASCAR, IndyCar, iRacing, Fox Sports, NBC Sports have been showing us the races. I really appreciate that and I'm happy that you do it. But uh, but at the same time, it could have been better. Like the drivers could have handled a lot of shit better. And um Yeah. Sponsors leaving someone for a sim race just because they rage quitted. Like, seriously, come on. And I think Blue Emma was just sponsoring Bubble just for Bristol. Apparently, I, they sponsored him in real life last year. I didn't even know that. I forgot. I don't even know that, to be honest, until Sunday night. So, yeah. As for the World of Outlaws, 
it's been amazing. I'm happy that World of Hollow is getting love on television, even though it's virtual. I know World of Outlaws always do uh, show the races on Dirt Vision, but I would love to see World of Outlaw on TV, whether it's virtual or real life. I know people say it's NBC Sports, but sometimes I don't have that channel and it's just tape delays. I would, I would love to see a live race like TNN did. So yeah, IndyCar has been good, World of Outlaw, even though it's been one race, but I think it's good. They'll be going to Knoxville tomorrow. I can't wait for that. NASCAR needs to get... The, the NASCAR racers need to... Stop acting like... PlayStation or Xbox players. And just have fun. Take seriously, but have fun. But don't take it too serious. Also, the Short Track Challenge. So far, although we only had Rockingham. It's been Fantastic. I love the uh, short track rate, uh, short track challenge. It's awesome. Can't wait for Lucas Oil, Myrtle Beach, and Martinsville. Can't wait. So that's been this episode. Uh, what do you guys think about the iRacing stuff that's been going on so far? Has it been good? Have you guys had a good experience? Bad experience? Is there something you gotta criticize? Feel free to put it in the comments below. If there's some points I missed out. Let me know in the comments below. So I want to say thank you guys for watching this video. Comment, like, and subscribe for more. Follow my social accounts. Instagram, I'm here for us 25 and e for us 48 Underscore by T. I like my Facebook page. enasker 48 Nation Films. Don't forget to turn on my YouTube channel notifications for more content. Turn on the bell for more content to get notified for more content. Thank you guys for supporting E Nation. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Hope you guys continuing to enjoy enjoy the iRacing videos and iRacing uh, races on TV. And hope you guys are staying safe. See you guys next time. Goodbye. And there's Charlie being a sleepy boy. Hello, Charlie. He's been a sleepy boy in the background of the video. Shh, let him go back to sleep. Bye-bye.